ओम ज्ञान तिमृंद जानाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुरू वैष्णवश्रीप सागर जात सह गणरघुनाथ तम सजीव साध्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तत्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरे प्रिय नमो महामदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गौर विषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक भक्तस्वक भक्तावता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्त शक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंदीयद्वैता गदाधर श्रीवासवी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद्य सन्वयादित्रत चाथ सुभिजस्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवये मुह्यूरय तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यृसर्गो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तुभक सत्यम परम धीमह नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर स्वस्तिस्तु विश्व खल प्रसीदता ध्यान तो भूता शिव मिथोधिया मन भद्रम भजता दधोक्षज आवेश्यता नो मतिरप्य हेतुकी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस फायर सेक टू दिस ज्ञान यज्ञ ऑफ श्रीमद भगवत गीता in the previous two sessions i discussed the background the introduction to bhagavad gita we discussed about mangala charan or auspicious invocations for primary subject matters before starting a book we discussed on shabda or word and its arth or meaning what is shastra or scripture what are the different types of scriptures so the previous session at the end we discussed what is shastra shastra teaches that knowledge which we cannot derive from any other medium this is what we should remember because many times what happens is that Uh, today's modern science says 
So actually, modern science and Shastra, they have different subject matter. Even if their subject matter is same, like in our Puranas, there is description of the process of creation. But uh, the way of presentation in modern science and in Shastra is different. Shastra follows a different system. The language of modern science is different. In the earlier ages, the system of teaching was different. So Shastra, they teach in, in three different ways. Because our life depends on our karma or our actions. According to the karma or actions we perform, we get the result. So the karma or actions we perform is called pravritti. And not doing is called nivritti. So if we perform the right action, we get the right result. If we perform the wrong action, we get the wrong result. So Shastra teaches us for what type of action we get what type of result. This knowledge cannot be derived from any other source. This knowledge of karma, the science of karma is extremely intricate. It's very complicated. For some karma, we get result immediately. But for, but for some actions like sowing a seed, we don't get the result of the tree immediately. It may take many years. So there are some actions for which we may not get result even in this lifetime. We may get result in future lifetimes. So then we, uh, then we fall into delusion. We start wondering, science is saying something and Shastra is saying something else. Uh, compared to science, the vision of Shastra is very wide. Science discusses on very limited subject matter. And science talks only of this particular life. Modern science does not uh, discuss what happens after life. After this present life, what happens is not discussed. But Shastra discusses what is life, what is death, what is creation, why it is created, what is its objective, what is the goal of our life. These are uh, such secrets which can be known only through Shastra. Now, if we do not have faith in Shastra, that is a different point. But just by our not believing, the knowledge of Shastra will not change. Just like I had discussed in the previous session also, if you do not believe in the law of gravity, it does not mean that gravity does not exist or gravity will not act on us. What is truth is truth only. And you cannot change the truth. In Gita, Bhagavan Shri Krishna says, so in Gita, Bhagavan discusses that there is never an abhav of sat and never a bhav of asat. So if we talk about the horns of rabbit, the rabbit will never have horn. Science may uh, develop something, but according to the natural process, neither human being has horns nor habit, rabbit has horns. And truth cannot be changed. Reality can be known, it can be understood. Science also teaches us according to cause and effect only. It conducts an analysis and it explains what is happening. It cannot change what is happening. So science discovers. Discovery means the object was or the law was already existing. Newton did not frame the law of gravity. He discovered the law of gravity. Nobody can change it. Similarly, the knowledge that we receive from Shastra, the laws that Shastra teaches, those laws cannot be changed. We can learn them and we can apply them in our life and get benefited. And for our benefit only, Shastra teaches us or gives us instruction. So Shastra teaches in three different ways. This is important to understand. 
so some people are telling that i uh, is not teaching gita is discussing something else <laughs> so i had told earlier only that gita is a very deep science there are a lot of pearls inside gita so in order to understand gita first we have to understand the system of how shastra teaches and we have lot of wrong understandings about shastra if we maintain the wrong understanding we will not get benefited in our country there are there are so many scriptures and if we uh, do not take benefit of that it is our loss so in order to learn shastra we need some patience shastra teaches according to three ways firstly it teaches according to like a king like a king gives an instruction when king gives an order he cannot be questioned why he is ordering like this like nowadays people have a tendency they question everything why should we do like this why should we do that so to some extent questioning is good but there are some things for which uh, there are some things which cannot be questioned so like science discusses about big bang now if somebody asks why big bang happened science cannot explain that what was there before big bang science does not explain that does that mean science is wrong no so there are some things for which we don't have answers and they cannot be discovered science does not have any method by which it can discover the background or the history behind big bang so similarly uh, king king discusses some laws like nowadays we have parliament parliament frames the laws now we may ask why parliament did like that no we cannot question it we have to follow the law framed by parliament if we follow it it is good and if we do not follow it we have to go to jail or at least we have to pay fine second way of teaching is like a friend like a, a friend teaches us uh, nicely that do should do like this we should not do like that and the third is according to a lover so if you we, there is a lover or a wife she won't tell anything directly that you know i want to buy a sari so the wife will go with the husband to the market and she may not tell directly that i want to buy this sari so so she may pick up the sari from the shop and ask her the husband uh, please give your uh, feedback how is it appearing on me so she is not telling directly that i want to buy this she is just asking the husband how does it, how do i look in this sari so the actually objective of asking is not to know whether it is looking good or no but actually she wants to buy that so this is parokshava this is the indirect way of teaching so similar shastra also teaches like this all teachings are not given directly in shastra there are many things spoken of in a roundabout manner so we have to understand shastra's way of teaching so the intelligent person an intelligent husband will understand what the wife wants and if he doesn't understand when the wife will go home then there will be fight now the wife may become upset he may say that i wanted to purchase the sari but you did not give it to me so that's why we have to understand shastra system of teaching so this is verse from hari leela amrita vedah puranam kavyam cha prabhur mitram priyeva cha shastra teaches like prabhu the king the mitra the friend and the priya the lover shastra has three types of statements this also we should understand nicely there are vidhi vakyas there are nished statements and there are arthavad statements to vidhi vakya the vidhi vidhi statements watch what they speak like uh, speak the truth follow the dharma nished vakya nished statements are like do not perform, do not act violently and there are some arthavad statements which are uh, statements of glorification they neither have any instruction nor any prohibition but they simply uh, glorify it's like today like we have advertisements in shastra it is called arthavad so there somebody is simply glorified so this we will find a lot in puranas 
that uh, if anybody who studies this shastra or this puran daily he will not have any lack of wealth he will always be victorious his diseases will go away so these are uh, statements of glorification arthavad now those statements of glorification are not giving a direct instruction that you should study this uh, shastra daily but they are but they are simply glorifying so that we become inspired to study like for like while eating somebody may glorify a particular item of food a lot and then by hearing that glorification we feel we also feel like eating like nowadays there are advertisements buy one get one free so actually they, nobody wants to give us anything for free from where can somebody give give us something for free the person has opened his shop not to give us something for free but this is simply to uh, entice us or to inspire us to purchase the product so actually the cost of the free product is already included in the product for which is being charged so this is called arthavad or glorification so one who is hungry he he will not ask what is cooked he will say that whatever is cooked bring it one who is dying out of hunger he will never ask what is what has been cooked today whatever is cooked he is ready for that and one who is not hang, not hungry he will ask 50 questions what is cooked today what will be cooked in the evening why it is not like this this is missing or that is missing so when we have need for any object we directly go and purchase it but we don't have any need like people go around for uh, uh, shopping just like entertainment they don't actually want to buy but uh, they get enticed by the shopkeepers the shopkeepers have different types of display so that customers get attracted so that is why nowadays when you go to, go to any mall so like people say we have lot of sense control so the test of your sense control is go to a mall and come back without purchasing anything uh, spend some 2 uh, to 4 hours in the mall and come back without purchasing anything if you can do that that means you have lot of sense control because it is not possible that you go and do not buy anything something or other you will buy you will get enticed by the shopkeepers so similarly in shastra people do not have taste or interest in following dharma so so shastra gives them something nice uh, to eat we are giving something for free just do like this you will go to heaven or do like that so this is the inspiring taste or generating taste so like somebody who is not having appetite for eating then he is uh, told to eat some particular item so that he gets hunger so shastra actually wants that we should follow these statements and we should apply them in our life so in another way they are described there are bhayanak statements which are uh, fear they inspire fear that if you do this you will go to uh, hell like there is description of hell in the puran you know, there are there is some hell where you will be fried and you won't die also and there are some uh, forest where the leaves of trees are like swords and you have to walk through them there are uh, uh, there are birds who will pluck out your eyes like this there is a desc- there are description of roar of hell people are crying so these are bhayanak uh, statements fearful statements like for children we apply carrot and stick technique if you do this if you do this you get carrot if you do not do this then you get the stick because human being who doesn't apply his intelligence who lives like an animal so how can an animal be controlled an animal how can he be trained like the people in circus how do they train animals they give uh, they they give something to the animal if the animal does that they give him something to eat otherwise he is uh, beaten with a hunter so this is the old system this is nothing new so there are some bhayanak statements in shastra then second we have rochak statements rochak is arthavad statements and then there are yatharth statements so uh, there is nothing like so in bhayanak and rochak statements there can be some exaggeration because that is called arthavad 
so hearing that people raise lot of suspicion and doubts about shastra how is it possible or that possible no first we have to understand the system of shastra so like uh, children for children we say that uh, please drink milk or uh, eat this otherwise you know you may become fat or diseased now that will happen or not that is actually not the main purport the main point is to generate the interest then there are yatharth statements or as it is statements so this is very important those who have not understood the deep purport of shastra they just get implicated in all these arthavad statements or somebody is speaking like this and uh, you know people are making allegations on our shastras and then we do not understand our shastras we get bewildered we start thinking yeah they are actually telling correct that shastra is telling this or that so we have to remember that there are these yatharth or as it is statements also and generally we don't hear this vedeshvat puraneshu tantrepi shruti sammate bhayanakam rochakam hi yathartham iti bhedatah so whether it is ved or puran or tantra or any other shastra which is uh, according to shruti in those shastra we find these type of statements if you uh, study any stotra then you at the end you will find glorification or the fruit what happens if you study that particular stotra so the language of shastra is understood in understood in three other ways first is called samadhi bhasha second is laukiki bhasha and third is called parakiya bhasha samadhi bhasha prathama laukiki iti tatha para tritiya parakiye iti shastra bhasha tridha smrita what is samadhi bhasha it is extremely difficult to understand samadhi bhasha is uh, that bhasha which the sages have realized in the state of samadhi and they have explained it as it is so it is difficult to understand because the experience they have got in their uh, samadhi state and uh, it is different from the, our day to day experience so the uh, experience that sages have when they when we hear that we don't find it logical we don't find find fitting it according to our logic but it is as it is everything will not fit in our logic today science things like they have wave and particle theory in quantum mechanics so they discuss wave is a particle uh, light is wave or particle so this cannot be explained so both have different characteristics they have different properties so wave does not have weight but particle has got weight particle is uh, limited to one place but wave is flowing so their properties are completely different from each other but the same light it appears in two ways sometimes it appears as wave sometimes as a particle so this is completely different from logic because logic says what is wave cannot be particle what is particle cannot be wave but how is it possible here that uh, we have both the properties in light so samadhi bhasha is uh, something like that like i have given example here na sadasit na asadasit so this is a very important statement of upanishad that what is uh, not as, uh, sat it has to be asat and what is not asat then it should be sat now this statement is telling it is neither sat nor asat now to understand this we have to give explanations so the realized sages they give explanations so when we come across these statements we should not think that some foolish people are making some statements uh, they don't mean anything but but because this is actually samadhi bhasha we will get it in upanishad puran we find samadhi bhasha many in many places in bhagavatam also so sometimes these statements they bewilder our mind and our faith gets shaken at what is happening then second is laukiki bhasha laukiki bhasha is our the general language that we use here the statements are explained in simple language 
लाइक द्वा सुपर्ण सयुजा सखाय सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इन ऋग्वेद इट शोज दैट इन आवर बॉडी देर इज आत्मा एज वेल एज परमात्मा लाइक इन अ ट्री देर आर टू बर्ड्स हु आर सिटिंग सो वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस दिस नॉट सो डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड इन द थर्ड इज परकिया भाषा परकिया लैंग्वेज हियर देर आर सम एनालॉजीज सम स्टोरीज now but the story is meaning is actually not in the story its purport is to explain some philosophy some conclusions or some siddhantas like in bhagavat we have the story of king puranjan so it is said that there was a big city there were eleven gates and there was a king so that is actually the explanation of uh, of, of our body the city is explained uh, the body is explained as a city so the nine gates of body to usko leke varnan kiya jata that has been explained in that story so this is known as parakiya bhasha so we have to understand this also because shastra will not tell us that this particular verse is samadhi bhasha or which verse is laukiki bhasha or which one is parakiya bhasha that we have to understand through parampara in this way shastra is understood so what does shastra contain it has the shabdas or words so the shabda or the word has three types of meaning so this is a very detailed subject but i am trying to explain in brief first is the word has a primary meaning called mukhya artha like whatever we say that is its meaning like if i say this is a book so it has a direct meaning this is a book it's a book now uh, you remember i had explained word and its meaning so book is the word and the object book is its meaning so this is primary meaning or mukhya artha second is lakshanik artha so lakshanik meaning is little different from the primary meaning like if i tell the book is kept on the table so where is the book kept that book is on the table so you understand that there is a table on that there is a book now if i tell that prem mandir is on chatikara road so this is how we speak but we don't pay attention but if you pay attention that the book word that we used on that uh, the book is on the table does the word on carry the same meaning in the second statement that prem mandir is on the chatikara road no on does not mean that there here on means one object is on another object so when we say prem mandir is on chatikara road so is the temple actually on the road no it is not on the road if it is on the road then what will happen to the road how will it remain a road the traffic will get stopped but we all generally speak like this so here the word on or upon we have to uh, remove the primary meaning and we have to take the lakshanik meaning so what we mean is that it, the temple is actually on the side of the chatikara road it is not actually on the road but then why do we uh, not speak like this that the temple is beside the chatikara road we could have spoken like that so because we want to say that it is exactly just touching the road and beside the road now it if we simply say near the road then it may be uh, then there is no fixed distance so there will be no uh, clear meaning in that that is why we speak that the temple is on the road so this is lakshanik meaning 
and here i am not just talking about shastra even in our daily life we speak like this so there also many times we have misunderstanding among each other because we do not understand the correct meaning like if i say that you broke my heart so does that mean that the person has actually broken the organ heart like any other object is broken if somebody says that uh, some sweets are kept in front of you there is barfi and if i tell you that please break it and give me half so you understand what is the meaning of breaking if i say that you broke my heart does breaking have the same meaning here like it had in uh, the breaking of the sweet so when we say breaking my heart there uh, the primary meaning has to be removed and we have to take the lakshanik meaning so shastra always does not give primary meaning like in our day to day communication also we don't use primary meaning always so if i tell that seeing you my heart has become like a garden so has heart actually transformed into a garden no then the third meaning is called vyangya arth to yahan jab lakshmik arth hota hai to uska kuch aapas mein sambandh rehta hai vyangya arth so in uh, lakshanik arth we have some connection but uh, in vyangya also means like uh, speaking sarcastically or making joke here vyangya does not mean that here arth hota hai ke here vyangya meaning means that such a meaning comes out of the word which uh, actually cannot be understood by seeing the word but the wise people they understand the situation and according to that situation they can take out the meaning so vyangyas are of many types because of vyangya a statement can have multiple meanings different people can take out different meanings of the same statement so in upanishads there is story like that like that uh, humans uh, uh, demigods and uh, demons they went to bhagwan so bhagwan said dan 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 somebody said giving uh, charity somebody said uh, there should be, uh, we should do mercy somebody said dan means charity so according to one's situation the meaning is derived so imagine it is the time of evening and you are sitting and somebody says that uh, the sun is going to set so if you are a, a pujari then uh, the meaning that you will take i should go for puja if you go to work then uh, the meaning that you will take is that today's work is over i should go home to anek koi chor hai to if somebody is a thief so the thief may think that yeah now it is my time because the sun is going to set now i should start my work now in the statement there is no such meaning it simply says the sun is going to set it doesn't say that the pujari should go to uh, go to worship the uh, wife may not think that i should go for cooking or somebody in the goshala will not think that uh, i have to give food to the cow that is not directly in the statement but the meaning is derived according to the situation but the meaning is not there anywhere in the statement so that is simply indicative this is indicatory meaning so the kavya or what we popularly call poetry uh, kavyas mainly have this type of meaning in sanskrit what we have kavya the poetry they have all the three types of meaning given here but the greatest kavya is that which has uh, maximum vyangya meaning the kavya which has only primary meaning that is considered useless what type of kavya is this so this is very important to understand that when we study shastra we have to see that the speaker why is he making this statement and through this statement what does he, the speaker want to convey to me whether he wants to indicate the uh, convey the mukhya or the primary meaning or the lakshanik meaning or the vyangya or the indicatory meaning so in our shastras 
have all these kind of statements and those who under, do not understand this uh, system they get bewildered so regarding shastra i want to complete this topic now we come to our main topic till now i just laid out the background now we come to bhagavad gita so now the first question that will be raised is especially by today's uh, youth that uh, why should i study gita why not study newspaper this gita is simply an old book what is the use of studying that so this is important to understand that why we should study gita because prayojanam vina mandopi na pravartate prayojanam vina mandopi na pravartate that uh, a person of low intelligence even he does not want to perform an action by which he will not accomplish anything even if he is doing something he will definitely have some objective behind that so this gita through gita what goal will i accomplish so obviously naturally this question will arise in our mind so it is very important to understand this point so first point is that every person has some desires there is no person in this world which will not have any desire and if he has he or she has desire then he will have he will have to do something in order to fulfill desire an action has to be performed and a desire can be fulfilled in multiple ways so for the fulfillment of desire we have to take decisions in our life or decision making jisko bolte hain aur ye decision making nirnay lena ye hamare jeevan ka ek bahut hi mahatvapurna so decision making is an extremely important subject in our life because our life depends on our decisions if we take a wrong decision then we will reach somewhere else only so just like if we have to go to delhi if we have a destination there are various paths of going to delhi now if we take out the take uh, if we go on the wrong path we will reach somewhere else only instead of delhi we may reach agra and if we reach agra i was i was not, we will realize we were not supposed to come here so lot of our time and our energy will get wasted so that is why yeah in order to take this decision this is decision making it is an extremely important art in our life and wise people are those who take right decisions in the right time the successful people are those who take right decisions in the right time those who uh those who do not take right decisions at right time they remain they become failures so decisions are taken by our intelligence and uh, our intelligence is uh, such a machine which uh, we get naturally with from our birth but in order to uh, take decisions for our intelligence we need knowledge whatever decisions we take we take them through our prior experience or what we have learned by hearing or by seeing even though we may not have experience in that still we take decisions based on the prior knowledge so the the main component in decision making is our knowledge and our so our decisions are influenced by our samskaras and our latent desires the impressions in our heart but if we don't have any knowledge if we don't have any knowledge regarding going to delhi then we won't understand how we should go so for right decision we need the right knowledge that's why we have to obtain knowledge 
सो फ्रॉम गीता वी गेट दैट नॉलेज सो वॉट टाइप ऑफ डिसीजन वॉट टाइप ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज वी फेस इन आवर लाइफ वी विल फाइंड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दैट इन गीता गीता इज नॉट समथिंग दैट भगवान स्पोक फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर्स अगो इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट गीता इज एक्चुअली गोइंग ऑन इन आवर लाइफ नाउ ओनली गीता इज अ लिविंग बुक इन एवरी पर्सन लाइफ देर इज गीता बिकॉज एवरी पर्सन हैज टू फाइट अ वॉर इन इज लाइफ If we want to fulfill our desire, then we have to fight the battle in our life. There is no such highway that we just go straight into that. There will be no obstruction. Nobody will cause trouble to us. It's not like that. There will be lot of difficulties. There is no such road, no highway where we don't face any trouble. So we face different types of troubles like adhyatmik or adi bhotik were the troubles created by other people the people living nearby they also create troubles they may be come envious of us even our family members if our even our family members will create trouble in our life if we start becoming successful this is the major uh, problem in every human being being envious of others the third disturbance that we face is through the natural calamities like we had flood now that flood is has gone away now we have influenza then we have mosquitoes so many problems so these are natural calamities so we have primarily three types of disturbances in our life through from our uh, own body from our from the people living nearby or the different living entities insects animals etc and natural calamities material nature creating trouble so we have to deal with all the three and how to deal with all these three that is what we have to learn from bhagavad gita so bhagavad gita is also something like a parakiya bhasha so there are analogies how to deal with problems of our life so we have primarily two desires although we have many desires but uh, if we analyze them then at the end finally we will have we will end up with only two desires <laughs> that's why it is very important to understand gita so in bhagavad gita bhagwan says that there is uh, we want happiness and want to avoid misery aur kuch nahi hai hum jitne bhi kaam karte hain usko aap visleshan kar mainly we have these desires nothing else whatever work we do either we are doing it to attain happiness or we are doing it to get rid of misery so human being walks on these two only like a train runs on two tracks similarly these are the two tracks on which our train is moving on either we want to attain happiness or we want to avoid misery so gita teaches us how to deal with both because uh, every person remains implicated in these two he wants to attain happiness which he does not get and he wants to avoid misery and he remains implicated in misery every person works for getting happiness he may get little happiness sometimes but after that again there is misery so why is there misery why don't we get happiness this is what gita teaches us kis prakar how to attain that state wherein we always remain in happiness and never become miserable so that this is what gita teaches so who will be that person who would not like to study gita who can say that i uh, do not want to be happy who will say that i want misery so if you are ready to attain permanent happiness and avoid misery you have to learn gita this is what gita is teaching थ्रू गीता दिस इज वाई वी शुड स्टडी गीता 
not because i am a hindu that is why i should study gita whether you are a hindu or whatever you are a human being when bhagwan spoke gita that time there was no hindu muslim christian sikh or etc that time there were only human beings every where was sanatan because everything is uh, because uh, every jeeva is sanatan so if we have the wrong knowledge so this is a scientific process or a flow that we see here first step is if we have a wrong knowledge then second step we will have wrong desire then third step we will make wrong decision if we have wrong decision then fourth step we will perform the wrong action if we perform the wrong action next step we will have the wrong result and finally we will have misery so this is why we face misery although we do not want it why we face misery because to begin with we do not have knowledge and we take decision in ignorance and we may think that we are taking the correct decision so a young person may think that if i marry him or her i will become happy and then after that what happens we know that's why most of the hindi cinemas the movies that we see after after marriage the movie ends because after that the story which will happen that is reality which we did, which they do not want to show so who will come to uh, watch that so all the imagination is just before the marriage all the instruments and all they are played during marriage and then people go away from the cinema hall because they know that now what is the real story will begin what is there to watch that is happening in my family also so this all this process this flow happens in everybody's life and the primary reason for that is wrong knowledge as long as we do not obtain the correct knowledge तो ठीक 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 ज्ञान, अच्छा, अच्छा, so we have to go to the uh, source the original source aur gehrai mein ja thoda yahi mat rok pehle to log vichar hi nahi karte aur dhun mein chale jate hain isse nahi hua ab ye kar lete so people just get stuck somewhere in the middle in this process they uh, they think that if i rectify this if i or if i rectify that i will get the right result but actually what is required is to begin with we have to get the correct knowledge then everything will fall in place so with knowledge i am not talking about the knowledge imparted in schools and uh, universities i am talking about the knowledge about our desires about ahankar about karma how do we what influences us what are the different types of desires how do we get influenced these these this knowledge we can get in our shastras and uh, primarily in bhagavad gita in a very brief and systematic way gita explains all this so for this we should study gita so the, uh, we will get be benefited by this because we all want to become happy for this we should study gita our life is a battle as i said earlier there is nobody who uh who was born but did not have to fight a battle whether you are born in a rich family or in a middle class family or a low income family 
you wherever you are born you have to fight in your life you have to struggle and a human being learns through struggle only one who has not faced struggle in his life he will always remain a fool so we have to struggle with our body struggle with our mind at least everybody has to struggle with his mind even if even if uh, one has all kinds of facilities and comforts everywhere one has to struggle with his or her mind so in like in geeta says our mind is our mind is the friend mind is the enemy so the mind doesn't let us sit peacefully it keeps us giving all kinds of desires so i usually say that man jab tak shant nahi hota jab tak ye ashant nahi hota sunne mein vakya bada athpatha lagta hai lekin ye hai theek so i usually say that suppose you have a desire and if i suppose fulfill all your desires immediately then your mind will again give some new desire you can say you don't say that no now my all desires are fulfilled i don't want anything mind will again give a new desire so that we uh, our peace is disturbed so man is always Uh, generating disturbance and for the, and in order to solve that disturbance it gives solution and then we think that this happened that happened but actually the problem is with the mind only so in order we have to understand the mind we have to understand the psychology that is extremely important because we are uh, sitting in this body so it is just like if we are driving a car and we don't have control of the steering and the car is moving on its own there is no driver so this is very dangerous so similarly we have the mind mind just keeps going here and there so like in village you know we are, we are, we are sitting in the uh, home and uh, the goat uh, the the sheep or the cow if they just wander anywhere if you leave them they won't come back in the evening to home so the animal just keeps looking up and it may wander here and there anywhere the animal won't come back so our mind is like the camel the mind will keep walking so in sanskrit the root char has two meanings one meaning is eating like we say uh, the cow is eating so so uh, char means to walk also like the feet in sanskrit are called charan that is to walk to do vicharan or acharan so man will always keep on walking even if we lie down on the street uh, sorry if we, even if we lie down on the bed at night mind keeps on walking mind does not let us sleep peacefully it is continuously moving around so how to control that particular mind this is what Gita teaches us. Modern science does not teach us that. That is why we have to learn Gita. The difficulties, the obstacles we face in our life, how to deal with them, how to win over them. So our life is a battle, and the battle is at various levels that we will discuss later. We have a battle at our physical level, at the mental level. at a social level uh, related, uh, battle related to religion related to politics related to finance we, uh, we have battle with our boss battle with family members or wife so the war is at various levels how to deal with that how to win in this particular war that is what we have to learn in gita so gita begins with this the arjun who is uh, sitting on the chariot and the bhagwan who is driving it so that means our body is the chariot the senses the the horses are the senses now if we make mind the driver then we will be in trouble if we became bhagwan if we made big bhagwan the driver will become successful so making bhagwan the driver means to learn gita so bhagwan already gave instruction to arjun now if we learn that and if we lead our life based on the wisdom of gita we will become successful like arjun that is why gita is essential that's why i said 
गीता इज नॉट अ डेड बुक इट इज अ लिविंग बुक बुक है और इसको लेकर हम अपने जीवन में सफल एंड वी कैन बिकम सक्सेसफुल इन आवर लाइफ विथ गीता ये गीता क्यों पढ़े इसके लिए मैंने बोला आंतरिक युद्ध है भौतिक और मानसिक युद्ध सो आई ऑलरेडी स्पोक ऑफ दिस दैट वी हैव फिजिकल लेवल एंड मेंटल लेवल वॉर इन आवर लाइफ then we have war in society within family then within religious institutions and their uh, war uh, you know between the war based on gender and uh, war between countries so different levels war is, is going on in our body you know there are bacteria and uh, continuously there is bacteria getting killed when there is fever then what is happening there is battle inside so starting from body go till the topmost level everywhere there is war or how how can we win in this battle geeta this is what geeta teaches us geeta har ek level ki baat geeta will talk at every level even at bodily level geeta will teach us what we should eat how to eat how to sleep how to uh, deal in society if we have a, a fight how to deal but we have to understand that now the what all we are i am speaking i have spoken till now you will not see this spoken directly in geeta anywhere so as i said there are three kinds of bhashas in shastra so if we understand that system of uh, shastra then we can get the knowledge so in shastra there is system they give the whole knowledge in a sutra like vedanta sutra says athato brahma jigyasa small sutra now you can uh, uh, study commentaries of shankaracharya ramanujacharya on one small sutra they have given such long long commentaries so similarly when bhagwan is speaking he speaks in very brief but because his knowledge is extremely deep so if we deliberate on that then we can learn something so जो है वो विषय से संबंधित ही पूछें क्योंकि जो प्रश्न दूसरे पूछते हैं आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू आस्क विच आर रिलेटेड टू द करेंट क्लास द क्वेश्चन विच आर अनरिलेटेड दे विल गेट डिस्कस्ड इन दी अदर से इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू टू डेज क्लास काइंडली आस्क उसके मूल इच्छा अनुसार है कि ज्ञान अनुसार है बताया ना मैंने ज्ञान ज्ञान के अनुसार इच्छा होती है सो so, ज्ञान ही नहीं होगा तो इच्छा कैसे हो जाएगी जैसे अगर व्हाट हाउ इज आवर एक्शन बेस्ड सो एज आई सेड एज आई एक्सप्लेन एक्शन इज बेस्ड ऑन डिजायर एंड डिजायर इज बेस्ड ऑन नॉलेज लाइक इफ यू वांट टू कम टू वृंदावन जो अनादि से आ रहा है तो सो माय क्वेश्चन इज लाइक आवर कर्म इज coming from anadi and we have acted according to our desires ichha aati hai nahi ichha to to wo gyan anusar hai ki ichha so what we are doing is according to our vasanas or according to our knowledge so the answer is that we have lot of latent impressions in our heart but they are also according to some knowledge only we just have we don't have one or two impressions we have crores of millions of impressions so my question is that i am a student how can uh, a student relate with geeta like uh, i am a student in, uh, in delhi i am preparing for ias and i have to daily study for 10 to 12 hours but i have lot of dissatisfaction in my heart i have uh, come here leaving my home i have to spend so much money for my study no but after having left home my mind is i feel very miserable and dissatisfied 
so what can i get from gita so answer just like i said about gita that uh, later this topic will come up in gita and bhagwan will explain this i was uh, discussing about the mind only this is a property of the mind so arjun had asked this question to bhagwan that mind is very flickering so then bhagwan will explain bhagwan will explain that you have to practice controlling the mind like you know we have horse if you just leave the horse untrained or if you leave a bull untrained like when we used to do uh, agriculture the bull has to be trained so nowadays even the dogs have to be trained so if the dog grows up and is not it is not trained so the, without that the dog won't learn so similarly our mind if we do not train it it will keep running away according to its uh, impressions in the inside so for that we have uh, mantra meditation we have japa so daily we sit and do some japa so for attaining so for uh, so the question was that uh, can you recommend any mantra that i can chant for achieving my goal so the answer is that yeah there is mantra for doing japa so you you must be knowing about hare krishna maha mantra so you can chant that so ultimately we have to purify the mind only so for that there is instruction in gita so arjun his mind was disturbed and uh, for that only he asked bhagwan so in order to control your mind one of the best methods is to do japa chanting mantra so you don't have to do go to gym or anywhere else just uh, sit peacefully and uh, chant the recite the mantra so a question in chat when you spoke about the hell does it mean that the description of hell is wrong does it mean that it does not exist so answer it is not that it is wrong when i said that we have such statements in shastra it does not mean in that mean that it is wrong it is not wrong what i was explaining is that what is the purpose of ex- giving those statements the purpose is to stop you from uh, performing the wrong action so both hell and heaven exist in reality but the first point is that it is not exactly how it is described that's why i said like that but it is also not that it does not exist only hell and heaven what is actually hell hell means to suffer and what is swarga swarga means to have happiness heaven is to have happiness so both exist here only it is not necessary that you have to go anywhere else so like some times we say that his life has become a hell so then for him hell is here only so that is actually the objective so we have to understand the uh, purport of the shastra what does shastra want to convey to us जपयज्ञ priest or whether chanting is perfect or no so uh, perform chanting but then you have to chant with your uh, with involving your mind 
आप चाहे जितने में अमीर आदमी हो खाना पीना सोना ये आपको ही करना पड़ेगा उसको आप आउटसोर्स नहीं कर सकते सो जस्ट लाइक द प्राइमरी एक्टिविटीज ऑफ ईटिंग एंड ऑल यू कैंट डेंट गेट इट डन विद अदर्स यू ओनली हैव टू डू इट उसी प्रकार मन को नियंत्रण करने के लिए जब भी आप सो सिमिलरली टू परफॉर्म जप यू ओनली हैव टू डू इट लाइक व्हेन पीपल आस्क दैट प्लीज गिव अस ब्लेसिंग्स सो देयर इज नो अदर ब्लेसिंग्स ब्लेसिंग्स इज जस्ट हियर द इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड अप्लाई इट इन योर लाइफ If you do not follow the instruction, there is no blessing or any mercy. So these are stories that this happened or that happened when he gave blessing. So these things do happen, but the uh, uh, real thing you have to do it yourself. Because uh, uh, then why Bhagwan is sitting on the chariot and giving instruction to Arjun that uh, remember me and uh, fight the war. He could have kept his hand on Arjun's head and given him some blessing, but he did not do that. What does he want to teach? So this is a laziness that we have that I don't have to do anything. But Bhagwan has given us hands. So man actually walks on two feet. So having hands means to perform action. to do purushartha mahesh ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच श्लोक हमारे अंत में जो श्लोक yeah. है सो नाउ वी विल रिसाइड द प्रेयर वर्सेस एट द प्रार्थना श्लोक सो एक साथ हम इनको करेंगे सर्वोपनिषद होगा वो दोगधा गोपाल नंदन पार्थो वत्स सुधीर्भोक्ता दुग्ध गीता मृत महत एक शास्त्र देवकी पुत्र गीत एक देव देवकी पुत्र एको मंत्रस्त कर्माप्येक सेवा कार्पण्यदोषोपहत स्वभाव पृछा ता धर्म सूढ़चेत यश्रेय सैश्चित ब्रूहि ते शिष्यस्ते हम शालिमा तां प्रपन्न योगेश्वर कृष्ण यो धनुर्धर त्र श्रीर्जीओ भूति ध्रुवानीतिर्मतिर्म कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम नम पंकजनाभाय नम पंकजमालि नम पंकजनेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजाघ्रे भवे भवे यथा भक्ति पादयोस्तव जायते 
तथा कुरुष्व देवेश नाथ स्वम नो यत प्रभो नाम संकीर्तन यप प्रणाशन प्रणामो दुख समस्त नमा हरिपरम